solving a problem using the normal distribution and then also how to use the online calculator that we use in the classroom. So we're going to imagine that there's a random variable x as you can see at the top and we're going to say that that random variable no matter what it is maybe it is some hormone level in the blood anything that's measured now of course when we think about the levels of measurement we are thinking about a numerical variable but here we say x is a random variable such that it is described by the normal distribution and we see the two parameters there mu the, pop, the mean is 84 and then the variance sigma squared is 4.7 squared meaning the standard deviation is 4.7 so those two values they give us that shape of the probability density function. Those are the parameters of this function. And we say that this random variable is distributed as we can see there. So we are asked to calculate the probability that a randomly selected observation from this distribution is at most 82. So we see the mean is 84, the standard deviation is 4.7. What is the probability? that a randomly selected value from this distribution is at most 82.1. And what I want you to do immediately in your head is look, is, is see this picture. You might even just take pencil and paper and just draw it you know, uh, on the paper yourself. And so we can see, we see this line at the top. That's our probability density function, the curve for that function at least. And it's centered at 84. And as we move away from 84, we see it gets lower and lower and it's of course symmetrical around this mean and the beauty of all these probability density functions is that this total area under the curve the colored area that you can see that's always going to be one 1 1.0 and that says well what's the probability of any of these values occurring that we can see on the horizontal axis well it's 100 percent if it's any of them but now we're restricting ourselves to only a proportion of that whole and that is the proportion that is at most 82.1. And that's this orange area that we see now. And so what we're looking at is the area of this orange area. And you can imagine that it has a base and a height. The problem is it's not like a nice little rectangle. It has the shape to it. So we've got to use some other means. And what we're going to use behind the scenes, which you can look at at uh, some more advanced courses in, in biostatistics, we'll look at the cumulative distribution function. But that's going to calculate for us this area under the curve. What we need to do here, though, is to think of this not in terms of this random variable x, but to convert this to a random variable z that follows the standard normal distribution. So I've done it here for you. Step one, we're just going to rewrite the problem in statistical notation. So we want the probability, or this proportion in orange, of this random variable x being less than or equal to or just less than 82.1. That's what it says, at most 82.1. So is there any of these values here on this horizontal axis that is from 82.1 and less? Now to maintain this inequality, what we do to the left-hand side, we've got to do to the right-hand side, and that's what we're doing in step two. On both sides, we're going to subtract the mean. Now remember, this random variable x was distributed uh, or described by the normal distribution on the parameters mu and sigma, the mean, was 84. So I'm going to subtract mu from the left hand side, then I better subtract mu from the right hand side as well. On the left I'll just put the symbol mu, on the right I'll put the actual value which is 84. Step 3, I'll divide both sides by sigma and because the standard deviation is always non-negative, I don't have to flip the sign and it's not zero, so I can divide by that. So divide by sigma on the left hand side, divide by sigma on the right hand side, but on the right hand side I'm just going to put the value of sigma which is 4.7. Now on the left hand side I see x minus mu over sigma. I recognize that that is nothing than the formula that gives me z. So I'll substitute z in there. And on the right hand side I'm just going to do the calculation using a calculator and I see that's negative 0.404255 depending on how many decimal places your calculator displays. And again I want you just to visualize in your mind's eye or just pencil and paper. Look at this curve. This is the standard normal distribution of the random variable z and it has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So what all we did is we converted from something that has a mean of 84 and a standard deviation of 4.7 to something that has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So that 82.1 gets converted to a negative 0.404255 and 
that's this line, this orange bit here. And again, we, you know, we need to look at this geometric area of the whole, and the whole is one, and so it's this proportion of, of values that are 82.1 and less, this is the proportion that we're looking at. And if you use appropriate software, we can express that probability, so you can really get to this bit here, step four, in pen and paper, and I need you to do that. But now we need software or some calculator to calculate this area. As I said, it's not a nice rectangle, so we're not going to get a nice uh, analytical solution for this geometric area. And if we use software, we see it's 0.343, so there's about 34.3%. That's the probability that we get a random value that's at most 82.1. It's going to be about 34.3%. So let's look at one of the calculators that's freely available online. So here's our calculator, it's numworks.com, and you can just click on emulator and it'll show you this emulation of this nice uh, calculator, which you can buy for, I think it's about $100, but we can use it free of charge here. All the stuff that it can do, you can't click on the little screen, so you have to use the scroll buttons. It's not a touch screen in real life, I think, this calculator. So we're just gonna hit this down button twice until we get to the distributions app here. That little bell-shaped curve we see here, we're going to say OK. Now we're going to scroll down again to normal because we were told that X is described by the normal distribution. So we're going to click OK. And here we go. Now we can plug in values for mu and sigma. Now we've got two sets of values, remember. We've got uh, uh, 84 and 4.7, but we've also converted to standard normal. So we've also got 0 and 1. So let's do the 0 and 1 first. So let's scroll down until we get to next. I'm going to click OK. Now, unfortunately, it's not going to change to Z there. It still says X. So you just have to mind that. But very tiny on your own screen, you'll see this. It says mu equals 0 and sigma equals 1 right up there. So at least you know you're dealing with a standard normal. And what you're going to plug in here should be your Z value. So let's use our keyboard for that. I'm going to say negative 0.404. 255. And now I'm going to click on this little EXE, execute button, and we get the same result, 34.3. And we can even see this little graphic here very much the same as what we had on the screen before. Now, just to show you this works, let's go back and let's plug in the original values that we were given. We were told that mu was, I think it was 84. So let's plug in 84. I'm going to go down arrow and it was, the standard deviation was 4. 0.7. Let's scroll down to next, hit OK. And now we have to plug in that original value of X at most 82.1. So let's do 82.1. So you probably won't see it on this video, but again on your own screen you will. It says mu equals 84, sigma equals 4.7. And it says the probability that X is less than or equal to 82.1. And so let's hit the execute button. And we get exactly the same thing. That's before the conversion to Z, 34.3. So why the conversion to Z? Well, in the rest of the course, we're going to look at the Z distribution quite a bit. We're going to use the standard normal distribution uh, quite a bit uh, so that we understand the other distributions. It's such a nice distribution to work with. And if you look at the back of an old-fashioned statistics textbook, you can get tables, and those tables require... This, trans, uh, this conversion to or um, to a, a, a Z value. So you can do either of those. Now let's go back to the second part of the problem. So the second part of the problem said, now calculate the probability that a randomly selected observation or value from this distribution is at least 88. In your mind's eye or pencil and paper, this is what you draw. Still we see there at 84, that is where we see the top there. This is symmetrical around this mean. But now we want this area at the top. So from 88 upwards, again, the whole area under the curve, that probability density function says, what's the probability of any of the values on the horizontal axis or this random variable x? Well, for any interval of values would be, you know, 100%. If I go from negative infinity to positive infinity, it's all possible values. And so that, that constitutes 100% or all of the values. But we want the proportion of all of those that are 88 and more. So it's this area under this curve. Once again, we're going to use a cumulative distribution function to calculate this. But we have a problem. 
is that the cumulative distribution function is always going to calculate the area under the curve from the lower tail, from this side. So what it, you could do is think about calculating this blue area and subtracting that from the hole, which leaves you with a little orange area. So I'm going to add a step five here, but let's go through these first four steps. Of course, our step one, is we're just rewriting this in statistical notation. We're saying, what's the probability that X is at least 88? What I do to the left-hand side of the inequality, I do to the right-hand side. So on the left, I'm subtracting mu. On the right, I'm subtracting mu. But on the left, I just use the symbol. And on the right, I'm going to use the value. So it's minus mu, minus 84. I'm going to divide both sides by sigma. Then step three, we've seen this before. We recognize this is z. This little section here is z. So we just substitute z in there. We do the calculation on the right-hand side. And that's what we see. That's the probability that z is more than 0 0.851064. So let's put in a step five, a step that you can think about. So step five, and we're going to see that's exactly the same as doing the following. It's one minus the probability that Z is less than or equal to 0 0.851064. So the step four and step five calculates the exact same thing. So let's look at this little standard normal distribution here. We want this orange area, the probability that Z is more than 0 0.85, which is equivalent to saying the probability that X is more than 88. But the cumulative distribution function, which is really doing the heavy lifting for us behind the scenes to calculate this area under the curve, it does so from the lower tail, from the negative infinity side. So it's actually going to calculate all this blue area under the curve. But that's also a proportion of 1. So if I subtract the blue area from the hole, which is 1, then I'm going to be left with the orange area. So I'm just making you aware of the fact that this is what is actually happening when the cumulative distribution function is used to do the heavy lifting. And yeah, I've used software and I've calculated that area under the curve and that is 0.197367. Now let's go back to NumWorks to our calculator to see if we can replicate this. Good, so we've reset our calculator. I'm just going to scroll down again till I get to the distributions app. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to scroll down again till I get to the normal distribution. I'm going to click OK. And again, I am left with, you know, do I use the Z or do I use the original X? I think for this, in this case, Let's just use the original. So we were told that mu was 84. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to say 4.7. That was our standard deviation. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to click OK for next. And now I'm going to just go left arrow till I highlight this little block right there. And then I'm going to click OK. And look at that. I've got three options here. This was the lower tail. Again, if you look at your own screen, you'll be able to see this in the video, probably not. That was this little orange area towards negative infinity on the lower tail. This second one is between two values. And this third one is the upper tail area under the curve. And that's the one we want here. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to hit OK. And now you can see, we see the probability that X is larger than or equal to. So let's click this right arrow button so we can get there and we can type in 88, which was our original problem. What was the probability that X is larger or equal to 88? And now I can just click on the execute button. And there we see 19.7, just as we had uh, in the uh, on the previous screen. And we can see that's this orange area. And that's what we're calculating, and that is about 19.7% of this total area under the curve. I just warn you, though, that in more, uh, more advanced cl classes, you, you will see that we use the CDF. And the CDF is going to calculate everything from the lower tail up to this point, And we subtract this area here from 1, and that leaves us with this, with this orange area. So you can look out for that in more advanced uh, classes.